This is the notes for section 10.5, organizing and remembering formulas. So you've noticed and we've talked about um, throughout the last few units um, that we use very general formulas in this course. And, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to use formulas that we can always derive a more specific formula from the general formula. And that's what we want to look at being able to do today. We have a chart here that kind of lists all the general formulas that we that we've worked on uh, for lateral area, for surface area, and for volume. Um, so what we want to be able to do is take those very general formulas, plug in the information we know about a more specific figure to get a formula that is that is tailored to the more specific uh, figure. Okay. Now uh, to derive these formulas, we what we do is we, we just we do the following. It says formulas like volume equals base times height or volume equals one third base times height are, are general. They don't distinguish between a, a figure with a circular base or one with a polygon for its base. So what we need to do is we're just going to substitute in formulas for perimeter and formulas for area into those general formulas to make the formulas more specific. Okay. What this does for us is it helps us avoid having to memorize a specific formula for a specific figure for all of those specific figures. Okay, here's an example of what we're talking about. We're going to come up with a specific formula for the lateral area, area of a right cylinder. Well, to do that, I know in, in general that the lateral area is the perimeter of the base times the height. When we talk about the perimeter of the base, and if, the, if it's a right cylinder, I know that my base is a circle. Therefore, the perimeter is the circumference of that circle. And I know that the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r, or 2 r pi, it doesn't matter how we write that. Therefore, if I want to say, if I want to find the lateral area of that, of that figure, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 2 times pi times the radius times the height. And all I've done is substituted in what I know about a um, right cylinder, being its base is um, is uh, a circle. Therefore, 2 pi r would represent the circumference of that circle, and h would be the height. Therefore, now I have a formula in terms of r and h. And that's usually the information that we're going to be given if we're trying to find the lateral area. So this, no, this next example here um, is very similar to the guided example 1 on page 624, so you might want to read that before continuing on with this, uh, this next example. It says, write a formula for the volume of a cylinder in terms of radius and height. Okay, well, to do that, I'm going to start with the general formula. And the general formula is volume is equal to the area of the base times the height. Okay, well, we want it in terms of the radius and the height. Well, I already have height in my formula, so really all I need to do is get rid of the base and find it in terms of the radius. Well, let's think about the base of a cylinder. The base of a cylinder is a circle, therefore the area of that base would have to be pi r squared. Well, ins that means instead of base, I'm going to put in pi r squared. If I plug that in for base, then I will have my volume formula in terms of the radius and the height. So the volume would be equal to pi r squared h. This represents the formula that we're looking for. All right, before I go through the second example, you might want to look at example two on page 625 in your book um, before kind of continuing on with this. Um, so it says, a package is in the shape of two congruent open cones as shown at right express the volume of the package in terms of r its radius and h its height okay well i know in general the volume of a cone is equal to 
one third its base times its height. Okay. Well, there's two cones, and they both have the exact same base, uh, and they both have the exact same height. So if I take that value that we have there, um, and I double it, I can say um, the volume of this whole thing is two times this. Therefore, the volume of the thing that I'm looking for would be two-thirds base times height. Because if I multiply two times, that's just like making two times one-third, um, which gives me exactly what we, we just said there. So the only thing that's left for me to do because we want it in terms of the radius and the height. We have it in terms of h, but I've got to get rid of b. And b can be found fairly easy by knowing that it's a circle. So I can say the base b is equal to pi r squared. And now I'm going to plug that in here. Therefore, the volume would be equal to 2 thirds pi r squared h. Okay, And then the second part to that says, find the volume of the package if h is 12 and r is 3. So now I'm going to plug that information in here. So volume is equal to 2 thirds times pi times 3 squared times, well it says h is 12, so times 12. Okay, And then I'm going to go to my calculator to plug that in which would be 72 pi. Now if you want to get an exact answer, make sure that instead of you know writing in like 0.6 or 0.6 repeating, put in the, the fraction 2 thirds as you're multiplying that out. So you should get 72 pi as an exact answer. And if I hit uh, control enter on that, it gives me an approximation of about 226.2. So here's my two possible answers, 72 pi cubic units or 226.2 cubic inches as well. Okay?